All right, we are starting off our unit talking about how organisms reproduce and how they make those reproductive cells. Um, let's quick though, take a moment to remember back to mitosis, which is how our body cells replicate. Remember, basically we want to end up with two identical daughter cells at the end of our process. We want a complete set of DNA in both. And just remembering that the DNA, of course, as you guys know, are the instructions for the cell, but remembering that those instructions are coding essentially for proteins and that I'm sure you've heard the word genes. Okay. But what a gene is, is it's just a small segment of DNA um, on a chromosome and that gene makes a thing. Okay. And that thing could be an enzyme. It could be how to make part of a heart valve. It could be how to make a liver part. So each gene is giving the instructions to the cell on how to make all the parts and things that might need. Okay. So with mitosis, the whole point is we are looking for two identical cells with two full sets of DNA at the end. Okay. So then if that's how body cells reproduce, how does like a whole organism reproduce? Like, okay, that's how my lung can replicate itself. But is that how I replicate myself? Hopefully, you know, the answer to that since we are humans is no. Um, but there are two different kinds of reproduction. There's asexual and sexual reproduction. Now, sexual reproduction is what we do as humans, um, where you have two parents that make the offspring and that the offspring gets half of the DNA from mom and half of the DNA from dad. Um, and so we do this animals do this, most of them, most plants do this. Okay. But there is actually another type of reproduction. It's called asexual reproduction. And that is when there's just one individual and you are the parent. So basically you make a little clone of yourself. So that child has the exact same DNA that you do because they get all of their DNA from you. And so that is actually done through mitosis. You just, um, and a little bit of it bloop, plops off and that is your baby, your identical clone baby. Um, and so really simple things do this like prokaryotes, unicellular, eukaryotes, um, actually redwood trees do this, which is kind of cool. They do this out of the tips of their roots. They make a little clone baby that grows out of their root tips, which is pretty cool. Um, but again, most plants, most animals reproduce through sexual reproduction, combining genetic info from mom and dad. And so that's going to be looking at, that's what we're going to be looking at today. Okay. Before we get into that, we need to kind of take a step back and talk a little bit more about chromosomes. Um, remembering that humans, we have 46 chromosomes, which are 23 pairs. Okay. And it's a pair because you get one from mom, one from dad. Okay. And so up here, that's shown that, for example, this is chromosome number one, and they're typically arranged in order from, um, like longest to shortest. And so chromosome number one is the longest chromosome. Number two is the next chromosome. Number three is the next ish and so on and so on. And so we have two number ones because one's from mom, one's from dad, two number twos, one from mom, one from dad, and so on. Okay. Chromosome pairs number one through 22 that are all circled here in purple. Those are called the autosomes. Okay. And these have nothing to do if you're uh, male or female. Okay. Not what sex you are. It all has to do with the instructions on how to build the actual body structure, liver, lung, heart, skin, hair, all that stuff. Okay. That's where all that info is found. Um, these are called homologous pairs. And that means it's, you get a copy from mom and a copy from dad. Okay. And basically those copies are more or less the same, right? You might get a copy from mom that has blonde hair, a copy from dad that has brown hair. But other than that, everything about those copies is the same. So our very last set down here are the sex chromosomes. That's pair number 23. These, their only job is to help develop the structures related to what sex you are. Okay. And it's interesting because, so notice here, there's an X or a Y. This happens to be male X, Y. If you're X, X, you're female. So both males and females have an X chromosome. There's actually a lot of info on the X chromosome that both genders need. Um, but the Y chromosome, look at how small it is. And it is only involved with making those quote unquote, like male characteristics, like developing that anatomy. Um, and so this is number 20, this is pair number 23. It is not considered homologous because we don't have like identical things coming from mom and dad, because obviously here, these are very two different things. And so the sex chromosomes are the only pair that isn't homologous. Otherwise, essentially we have two identical things, one coming from mom, one coming from dad. This is our exception. 
So again, we get two copies, one from mom, one from dad. Okay. So there are some um, vocab to go along here with. So we have 23 different kinds of chromosomes, right? Here's the 22 and then here's the 23rd. So we have 23 different kinds. Okay. And so when we're talking about vocabulary here, N is the number of chromosomes. So if we have 23 different chromosomes, then for us, N is 23. But if you notice, if we were to count up one, two, three, four, five, six, we actually have 46. So 2N is 46, if that makes sense. Okay. So if you have 23 different kinds of chromosomes, but you have two of each copy, two times 23 is 46. Okay. So that's for humans. Here in this cell, what would be N and 2N? Well, I noticed three different kinds of chromosomes. So my N would be three, but since I have each one has a copy, two N would be six. Um, if you don't have, so this is called diploid. When you have two copies of each chromosome, that's diploid. That's what our human body cells have. One copy from mom, one copy from dad. But sometimes we don't have two copies. We'll talk about when and why this happens in a second. But if you only have one copy of each uh, chromosome, that's called haploid. You kind of think of haploid half, okay? And so this, our N here, would be three because we have three different kinds of chromosomes. Is there a two N here? No, because none of them are doubled up, okay? And we'll talk about when this happens in humans in a second. Um, but so this would be N of three and no two N here. So haploid is when you have just one copy of each chromosome and diploid is when you have two copies of each type of chromosome. Uh, let's look at this one. So these are fruit fly chromosomes. And yes, that little gray circle is a chromosome. So it would be N and two N here. Well, if I look, I very clearly see four different kinds of chromosomes. So my N would be four. My 2N, if I count it up, I have eight chromosomes total. My 2N would be eight. And this would be a diploid cell because I've got two of each thing. Okay, so that's haploid and diploid and N and 2N. All right, so let's get down to it. So how do we, if we're trying to reproduce, how do we make a baby? Well, we're going to take a haploid male cell, which happens to be a sperm, and a haploid female cell, which is an egg, and they fuse and they come together and they fertilize, and that makes one diploid cell with, 43, with 46 chromosomes, and that's called a zygote, okay? Why do those gametes, why do those sperm and egg have to be haploid? Well, let's think about it. If the sperm had 46 and the egg had 46, then how many chromosomes would the zygote have? 46 plus 46 is 92. Ugh. Okay. And then if what if that zygote, then once it got older, of course, and then it were to mate with something with 92 chromosomes, then their baby would have 184 chromosomes. Ah, so each generation, like the amount of chromosomes would double and double and double. And it would just keep going on and on and on. Um, and this is problematic because as it turns out, when you get, when organisms get a different number of chromosomes, funky things happen. So maybe you've heard of Down syndrome, okay? And Down syndrome comes from having one extra copy of this uh, 21st chromosome. It's also called trisomy 21. So instead of having 46 chromosomes, you have 47, okay? That's Down syndrome. If you have more than that, lots more extra copies, the baby doesn't even make it to be born or you have a miscarriage even before you even know you're pregnant. Okay. So if you have funky numbers of chromosomes, it really affects development. So if these original cells weren't haploid, um, we would have a really, really big issues and we wouldn't have babies growing properly. Okay. So we have to have the original cells each be 23 so that once they come together, they add up to 46, if that makes sense. Okay. And so obviously this is going to be a separate process then because most of our human cells are 46 chromosomes. So we're going to need to do something different to make these haploid cells. And so these cells are made by very specific um, and very specific organs and part of your body um, called germ cells. Okay. And for females, the germ cells are produced in the ovaries. Okay. That's where your eggs get made in the ovaries. And for male sperm get produced in your testes. Okay. And so this kind of very special process only happens in these parts of your body and the rest of your body 
um, does mitosis, okay? But germ cells are going to need to make these haploid gametes through a process called meiosis, okay? Very, very similar names here. And so basically the difference here is that meiosis is going to make haploid cells, where mitosis made diploid cells, okay? So at the beginning, we're going to start with a 2N diploid cell. And at the end, we're going to set up with an N haploid cell. We're going to have half the genetic info that we started with in meiosis. Okay. Um, and so before meiosis happens, kind of similar to before mitosis happens, we're going to get chromosomes replicating and in interphase, right? These cells are going to grow and prepare for division, and then they're going to enter meiosis. And here are the stages of meiosis, and this should obviously very clearly remind you of mitosis, right? So the order, the names are the same, except for notice it goes through kind of like two rounds of division instead of one. And that should make sense because we want to end up with half the genetic info that we did. So we're going to have to divide like an extra time. Okay. So, um, we're just going to go through the overview here. Um, so in prophase one, similarly, the chromosomes are going to condense and become visible. Um, and we're going to have our nuclear membrane dissolving. We're going to have spindle fibers forming. Um, one thing that's a little bit different here is that, you know, before we always had copy from mom and copy from dad. Okay. So like, let's say this is mom's chromosome number one and dad's chromosome number one. And here they've already duplicated. They're going to come together to form a tetrad and they're going to kind of move around together. Okay. And so then in metaphase one, those tetrads are going to line up in the middle of the cell. Again, very, very similar here. So here's like the tetrad of chromosome one. And let's say here's a tetrad of chromosome two. Okay. And so notice here, everything's still diploid. Okay. If we started out with two chromosomes. Let's say we still have got that. It's 2N. Everything's duplicated. We can see them actually duplicated. And then in anaphase here, our tetrads are pulled apart. So our homologous chromosomes are chromosomes from mom and chromosomes from dad are pulled apart. And this is going to be essential because we don't want a chromosome from mom and a chromosome from dad in each one of our daughter cells. That's how we get half. Okay. So chromosome number one from mom goes up. Chromosome number one from dad goes down. Okay. So, um, and then here we go. Once we're in telophase and cytokinesis, now all of a sudden we're haploid. Why? Because notice here's chromosome number one. I don't have a copy from mom and from dad. I just have a copy from mom here. Same thing with chromosome number two. I don't have a copy from mom and copy from dad. I only have a copy from dad here. So that's why all of a sudden we jump from being diploid to haploid and we jump from being 2N down to N. They stay duplicated though, because we can literally see they're still duplicated. All right. Then your cell is going to go into a little bit of a rest called interkinesis, and then it's going to launch right into meiosis two. And meiosis two, throughout this whole process, we're going to separate these duplicated sister chromatids. Okay. So in prophase two, again, they're going to recondense. We're going to have spindle fibers form, all that good stuff. In metaphase two, they're going to line up across the middle. We're going to have them, all the spindle fibers fully formed and attached. And then at anaphase two, Boop, this is where our sister chromatids get finally pulled apart. Okay. And now of course our chromosomes are going to change from duplicated to unduplicated because here notice the duplicated sister chromatids were attached and here they're pulled apart. And then here we go in telophase, we end up with haploid cells. Okay. And they are N because we don't have a copy from mom and a copy from dad. We just have mom or dad and they are not duplicated. And at the end, notice we have four kind of quote unquote daughter cells. We have four cells that are formed. Okay. And so in males here, here's a little example. We end up with four sperm that are made. In females, as it turns out, this whole process still happens, but the egg has to have a lot of other nutrients and stuff to sustain the zygote in the first beginning of development. And so the egg ends up, the female body has to put a lot more energy into an egg. And so what actually happens instead of making four eggs, like the guy makes four sperm, of these four that are produced, the female body's only going to put energy into making one of them the egg, and these three are going to dissolve and go away. Okay, so way few females way, make way fewer eggs than males do. The males make sperm. Obviously, males make no eggs, but um, if that makes sense. So for every one process of meiosis, the female will make, will make one egg, and for every process of meiosis, the male will make four sperm. Okay. So here's just another overview. In meiosis one, our homologous chromosomes, like chromosome one and chromosome one from mom and dad are going to separate and our diploid cells become haploid. In meiosis two, 
it's already haploid, but we're going to separate the sister chromosome chromatids so that now they're no longer duplicated. All right. Um, here are some general overviews, things you should know, main ideas. We will be modeling this in class to help you wrap your head around some of this vocabulary and all the chromosomes moving and what's happening. Okay. So we will talk about that in class. And if you need more information, textbooks, always a great place. We are in chapter 10.